Hey you guys and welcome back to my channel. Teacher Kristen here. This is our first of many live streams that we're gonna start happening, that we're gonna start doing daily. Let me know if you can see this. I'm actually trying to log in on the computer so I can see what you guys are seeing. Uh, once you do come in, let me know who you are and where you're from. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up. I am jumping over here so that I can see this. I'm gonna make sure my sound is off. Of course. Hi, you guys. Welcome. All right. Three, two, one. Now I can see your guys' comments in real time. It's just much easier to do it this way. Anyway, thank you guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Teacher Kristen, and typically this channel is all about online teaching and classroom brick and mortar teaching. I am a VIP kid teacher as well as a kindergarten through eighth grade teacher. But in our current situation, I've decided to kind of take this channel and steer it towards live streams. One, because we can't go anywhere anyway, and I feel like it's just a good place for teachers to come together, say what, what they're struggling with, what they're doing well with. I am never gonna sugarcoat things on this channel. If I'm having a hard day teaching or something's going wrong, you're never gonna see me just put on a happy, smiling face just to do it. Uh, as you guys do come in, let me know in the comments who you are and where you're from and give this video a huge thumbs up. It helps out the algorithm as we are trying to get as many teachers into this community as possible. But like I said, this is going to be the first of our daily live streams. And um, if you're new here, once again, click subscribe and the notification bell so you're updated every time that we do go live or have any piece of content go out onto this channel. And if you have any topics you guys want to see in the community tab of this channel i do have a poll but if you have anything that you don't see on there you can always have it be here in the comments and i will read every single comment that you guys put in this live stream but for right now there's a topic i wanted to start off these live streams with because i feel like it's something no one talks about and it is the rudeness the people that i just refuse to help get into online teaching. And I know people are gonna read that and think, why would you ever turn down putting someone into this program? Because it is very well known that teachers get a bonus when we refer someone into the program. But that does not mean that every person that comes to me or any other teacher is the right fit for this job. And so what I did is I went through all of my Instagram DMs and my emails, and I found my top three rude, demeaning, just the worst emails that when I read them, there was nothing in any, I'm sorry, there was no urgency on my side to help put them into this program. I actually thought they were not good fits for this program. And I actually did not return any of these uh, emails or DMs. I did not respond in any way, shape or form. If you also refer teachers or you help people out by answering questions, let me know in this chat. Do you get rude people that just think because you're there to help them, uh, that you can automatically get them in or they can demean you and they feel like, hey, you know, this person's here to help so I can write anything I want to them. Let me know in this chat what you guys think about this. I'm going to pull this up. Oh, I did put some disclaimers over here. Yes, I want everybody to know if a rude, demeaning, non-fitting person uses my code and goes through the program and the application process by themselves, I cannot stop them. I cannot say, hey, VIP kid. This person used my code, but I don't want to refer them. To my knowledge, I cannot write VIP kid and get that person taken off my referral. But if someone is or is not using my referral, I have the right to not return their messages. I have the right to deny, you know, helping them. And I hope you guys don't see that as me being rude or conceited. I'm going to read you actual things written to me, things people like wrote to me directly through DM and email. Let me know if you would help these people, if you think they would be good fits for this program. Uh, here's the first one, and I'm not saying any names. Um, some people wrote to me like where they taught and the, the classes or grades they taught. I'm omitting all of those because I still think that, you know, maybe they didn't have the best of intentions, maybe they did. I don't wanna give any information that, you know, you might know them. You, you understand what I'm saying. Anyway, if you're just joining, welcome. Let me know who you are in the comments because once I'm done with these, I want to read all of your comments. And of course, give this video a big thumbs up. Example number one, just said in a DM, saw you get to work online, period. Looks pretty easy, period. Can you get me in? I can start tomorrow, period. Thanks. This one, okay, I will admit I wrote this person back 
because I felt that maybe, you know, they just didn't know how the process worked. But let's break this down. Saw so you get to work online looks pretty easy. If you are an experienced VIP kid teacher or just a teacher in general, do you ever get these comments that are like, you're just a fortified babysitter. Teaching's the easiest thing in the world. Like people who have never done it that just assume, oh, she does this. It's got to be easy. Like, come on. I find that so rude and degrading. I would never go to another profession like a doctor's office or a dentist's office and say, oh, <laughs> you just sit around and talk to people all day while the nurse does your job. Looks pretty easy. I would never do that. Next part. Can you get me in? I can start tomorrow, period. Thanks. The reason I wrote this person back was because of the line, I can start tomorrow. So I thought, hey, maybe this person, you know, could be a good fit. I actually went and checked. This person did not use my referral. And right now, we'll discuss referral stuff later. But this person did not use my referral. But whether or not people use my referral, I actually answer every single question. If it's an actual legitimate VIP kid question, which this one is not. This one is just, can you get me in? I can start tomorrow. Thanks. And I wrote back and I said, yes, I do work online through VIP kid. It might look easy from an Instagram point of view, but I can assure you the early mornings over time can get to you. Unfortunately, you cannot apply and then work the next day. If you have any other questions and want to get started, let me know. I can answer any questions. That person did not write me back. It's been, what's this time stamped? Oh, right around Valentine's Day. Good. It's been about six weeks. That person did not write me back. So in my mind, this person was just looking for a clear way to get in, get the information. Uh, I want to disclaim if you are watching this and you are a prospective teacher, the people who are current VIP kid teachers who help get you into the program, we do not decide who gets hired. Whether you use me or anybody else for your referral, question, answers, whatever, we do not decide who VIP kid puts through the mocks, the demos, and then accepts to teach their first class. We are just here on the other side to help you prepare for your demos and your mocks. So I wanted to get that out there since this person clearly thought, can you get me in? The answer, it, can, of you, can you get me in? No, I cannot get you in. I can get you prepared to meet the person on the screen who can get you in, but I do not specifically get to decide who gets in and who doesn't. What I do get to see is which of my referrals passed, which of my referrals failed, which can be kind of an uncomfortable situation, especially when they write me back and they're like, oh, I did it, Kristen. How did I do? And I go look and it just says they failed. Whole different topic. Let's go to the next one. This is an email I got. Kristen, dot, dot, dot. Watched your videos, period. You're okay, I guess. I would definitely be a better teacher, dash. I have 20 years classroom and five years teaching English overseas. Not bad, right? They actually wrote not bad, comma, right? They would love to have me as a teacher. Anyway, can you get me an interview or what? They put no name. They put nothing else. That is... Literally just all I got in my inbox. We're going to break this down. Watched your videos. Huh. You're okay, I guess. That's like going to someone that you want help from. Like, let's say you need a letter of recommendation. That's like walking into that person's office and saying, hey, you're okay, I guess. I would definitely be a better teacher. Now, I don't know if this person, you know, is just trying to talk themselves up, thinking like, Maybe I could be a better teacher than teacher Kristen, but I'm going to I'm going to make her believe I'm going to start off with I'd be a better teacher and then here's why. If you're a young person and you want help or aid or reference from somebody, take this as a reference of what you should never do. Do not start with I'd be a better teacher than you and then name off the reasons why. This does not make me want to help this person. Especially the line they would love me as a teacher. Anyway, can you get me an interview or what? That comes off to me as like, I've already told you how good I am. Here's what I have. Can, can you get me in? Can you get me in or what? This one I can tell you with full certainty. I did not write this person back. Frankly, they didn't even leave their name. I didn't omit it here to be kind. I just, there was nothing in my email. They just stopped with, anyway, can you get me an interview or what? Maybe I'm reading this the wrong way, but the inflection and rudeness that I get through, watch two videos. You're okay, I guess. I would definitely be a better teacher. I have 20 years classroom and five years teaching English overseas. <laughs> Not bad, right? They would love to have me as a teacher. Anyway, can you get me an interview or what? 
that is my dramatic reading of the email. Uh, the next one is one I got in my Instagram DMs. This is literally all in one sentence and in all caps. It says, girl, period. I would love to teach. You good? That's it. That's all it said. My favorite part is that it's literally in all caps and all one line. Girl, I want to teach. Not want to. I want to teach. You good? Uh, this one I wrote back and said, let me know if you want any information. I did not reference anything with referral codes. I didn't say, you know, I can help you use this. I just literally asked if she wanted more information. And I did not hear back at all. But those are my top three. And if you are just joining, two of those three were on Instagram and one was on uh, Gmail. But I think the last one is my favorite just because it's, <laughs> girl, I want to teach. You good? Let me jump over here. I want to see your guys' comments. If you just joined, the discussion today uh, is people that I refuse to refer. Like, these people have written me in such kind of rude, obscure, demeaning ways. And on my end, there is really nothing that I want to do to help them get into this program. Two of the three I've written back and not received a response from, so I don't feel bad about this. Let's go to the comments. VIP Kid Teacher Casey, who I was just on her channel. She says, hi, Sarah says, hi, I'm a brand new teacher, eight classes so far from Arkansas. Sarah, let us know what levels you are certified to teach from. Um, speaking of certifications, do you guys want me to set up a live stream to talk about which extra supplemental certifications have gotten me the most bookings? Because there are definitely a few that in the last six months to a year I've gotten certified and then I have taught those classes over and over and over um, on that topic, I was thinking about doing a voice of VIP kid class or a live stream and doing all the songs, but I want to hear back from VIP kid first, since those songs are technically trademarked to them. I don't want to make a video of me singing all the VIP kid voice of VIP kid songs when I don't have their permission, but let's keep going on these comments. Uh, teacher Casey, I've only had one. She wanted me to do everything for her. Yes, I get this a lot. She's saying that she's had one referral. She wanted me to do everything for her. Sometimes people see that we as teachers can refer you and they think that we are the ones who will do everything for you. And that is not the case at all. Like I said before, we can only prep you to get ready for your demos and your mocks. We cannot fill out the application. We cannot set up your mock class. We cannot set up your trial and we cannot submit your license, social, whatever you have to give for your background checks. That all has to come from you. So if you are someone that is looking to join this platform, please be kind to your recruiters. We are on your side. We are rooting for you. Just know that a lot of this has to come from you because we don't know your schedule. We don't have your name and password login information. You have to schedule that. But we're going to read comments. So if you're just joining, leave a comment, give a thumbs up. We're talking about the negative side of VIP kid recruitment. Uh, Crystal says, I can't get any booking 60 days in. Uh, my question to Crystal is, do you know for sure, and I'm not demeaning, I'm really asking, do you have at least three weeks in advance open? Are you opening consistent bookings? Like if you're always available at 7 a.m., wherever you are, for example, is it every day at 7? Are you keeping consistent bookings? And uh, the third piece of advice I would give is make yourself available on the peak times. And yes, you may be doing all three of those and you may still not be getting bookings. I can tell you right now, the number of people in the actual office is very low. They don't have as many learning partners. They don't have as many firemen. If you are currently teaching and you have issues in the classroom, you probably notice the firemen aren't coming as quickly as they normally do. Uh, just, just some thoughts to put out. And Crystal, if you write me, I will share with you some videos back from 2018 when I was in your exact situation. If it's any consolation, I got three bookings in my very first month. Like, month and they were 1 30 in the morning one day 3 30 in the morning the next week and 4 a.m that third week that was it uh let's see here casey probably any probably has to oh look at her probably has tips on a video that could help that's true uh kristen hefferman if i say your last name wrong i'm so sorry i was about three months before i got my first class now i teach 66 classes a week hang in there it gets better this is true and i feel like it's especially hard being a new teacher right now because everyone that is currently a VIP kid teacher is home and they're probably trying to pick up extra classes. So if you are a new teacher that just joined in the last month or two, 
you have an even harder battle. So please just be patient, open as many bookings as you can and see where you go from there. Oh, Deborah is from sunny Florida. Deborah, my story of the day, my husband took me on a coffee date in the car that turned into us buying a bicycle. I got it home, got it put in the backyard, we ate lunch, and then immediately it started raining. Right now I see the sun shining, so if you follow me on Instagram after this live stream, you might see an Instagram story of me riding my bike, probably in this same attire with this side braid. Let's see here. Sarah, oh my goodness, I can't believe these people. I'm so sorry you had to go through this. Um, I'm glad you think that I was a little nervous about making this video and talking about people that I refuse to refer because I don't want people to think that I am like ungrateful that people want my help. I'm just making a point to say, hey, I take these referrals seriously. And if someone's approaching me and wants help, but they're demeaning or rude and, you know, just not friendly, I don't want that kind of personnel in this community. I don't want someone who can go around to a teacher they don't even work with and tell them that they're probably a better teacher. Because if they do that to me, what's the attitude they're going to give to the kids and fellow teachers in this community if they were to get hired? So that is the whole point of me making this video. And really the reason I started off this live stream series with it was because that last one I read, which if you're just joining, I'm going to read you my last one. If you miss them, go back and watch the replay. The last one I got was two or three days ago when I was thinking about what to start which said in all caps, girl, I want to teach. You good? Love them. Let's see here. Oh, I got a message restricted. I'm not sure how you guys can do that, but I can't read it. Uh, yes, please. Uh, oh, I think she's talking about me doing the voice of VIP kit songs. Sarah Script, I'm certified for levels one, two, three, and four and working on trial three plus. Um, I didn't get a lot of trials until one day I met a VIP kid learning partner, and that is actually a future onesie one take video because I actually met a learning partner and ironically through helping her answering some questions from the teacher's point of view, the summer of either 2018 or 2019, I'll have to look it up in my records, this girl would message me and say, hey, we've got like five trials and I don't have anywhere to place them in the middle of the week. Can you open up these slots? And I would. I don't know how that happened. I did not you know, ask or approach anyone, I will explain that all in a future video, but get your trial, like the most recent trial, which is trial three plus, get your trial certifications. Deborah Green, some people are just users for their own gain and, and will not say thank you if they did get in to teach. I think so too, and that's why I'm a little bit more picky with who I help. Um, in this day and age right now with the world the way it is, I will say that my Instagram and my Gmail have for lack of a better word, exploded with questions from people. And I will let it be known that I never ask these people, did you use my code? You should. If they come to me and they ask a question about a demo or a mock, I just answer the question to the best of my ability. I try to just be that stepping stone for them right now. If they've used my referral code, great. But I refuse to be that salesperson that says, oh, you want my help? Well, here's my code, ever. Because a lot of them come to me from YouTube videos, and if they do click my code and use it, I can clearly see them. But for example, I've got a lot of stay-at-home moms, a lot of adjunct faculty from colleges who have lost their job right now with um, no source of income at this point in time, and they really want to help teach. So when they ask me those questions, I just answer them, you know, let me be that stepping stone to help them get in because I don't know how I would handle, you know, being in their shoes. Uh, where did I leave off? Stacy Ann, she says, hi there, missed the good part. Yes, you missed my dramatic readings of my favorite emails and DMs from people, but head back into the replay. You definitely want to see it. If I could edit the video, I would have made it all black and white and put like a dramatic audio effect. Um, Michelle writes, why do trials terrify me? I haven't had one and would almost rather do booked info pending. Any tips on working on worth? Sorry, any tips on if it's worth keeping trial certification? Yes, my biggest tips with keeping trials is I just keep some of my favorite props, which you're going to see in a future video called Teacher Prop Tour. Giving out all the info. Uh, the ones I like the most is a Etsy buy that just has anything I've ever needed to teach in trials. It's got, you know, Dino, Meg, and Mike. It's got all the characters if I'm teaching family it's got feelings, it's got, you know, blue and all the aliens. Just having this 
and my laminated alphabet letters and my dry erase board. I feel better doing trials and typically with trials you have mom or dad there with you. Really, you get to be more animated in trials because they're so young. You're usually just going to have them repeat what you say the whole time, maybe sing a song or two. Um, I would just say the best way to get used to trials is just to do them. There's really no training to get better at them because you never know what kind of child you're going to get, especially because there's no previous teacher feedback if you are the first person. Stacey Ann wrote, trials are my favorite. Oh, but anyway, that is my chat for today. If you just joined, we are doing a live stream every single day at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Typically, like I said before, this channel just is based around online teaching, classroom teaching, uh, what makes things easier as a teacher. Nowadays, I've been adding financial videos, vlogs, days of my life. But for right now, while we were all quarantined at home, I could change up these topics to be, you know, VIP kid, online teaching, budgeting. We could do a day of live Q&A. It really is up to you guys. But um, that's going to wrap it up for this one. Before you guys go, if you would be so kind as to give this video a thumbs up, what that does is it pushes this video and all its content and information up in the YouTube algorithm. Meaning if someone searches VIP kid, this video might pop up higher in the search because you guys gave it all a thumbs up. If you are also a teacher, whether it's online or classroom, and you're looking for things to make your life easier because especially classroom teachers becoming remote, I have a list down below in the description box of everything I use in my online and brick and mortar classroom, like the ring light that I use right now to keep me, you know, really well lit. This is the nicest little ring light. It travels with me so well and it keeps everything nice and animated. I've been using this and I've been telling all my classroom teachers to use this because now we are all becoming teacher YouTubers because we are doing all of our classes virtually. So for me and my middle schoolers, they're gonna see me very similar like this, probably with the piano, because I'm a music teacher, teaching them what different things are, putting links down below to their assignments. If there's anything you guys are looking for to make your jobs at home easier, I've got a few things down below. That ring light is included down there. Anything else you guys need, let me know down below in the comments. If you're still watching, I'll tell you what tomorrow's live stream topic is. Oh, because you guys have been asking for so long, I'm finally going to talk about uh, why I quit doing the ketogenic diet. If you've been around here a while, you know I had meal plans that I gave out for free. I was losing weight for my wedding. Finally, I had a chat with my husband who was over there. I don't know if you can hear me. He might have headphones in. So we're finally going to sit down and talk about why I quit the ketogenic diet, what's worked better for me, um, actually trying to stay in shape during quarantine. So if you have any info on that, want to see that, just come in, hang out, give the video a thumbs up, chat. I read every single comment in real time. Try to make it more of a conversation as we can. But this week, we will talk about the keto diet. We're going to talk about things to do in quarantine. We're going to talk about my very recent three apple rating, which I just heard back about. I'm going to share with you guys my VIP can March paycheck, like how many classes I've taught in the last three weeks of March, because I wasn't teaching any the first week. If you remember, I was opening a musical. Uh, we're going to talk about different parts of quarantine. Oh, and how I got my first letter from a debt collection agency. We've got a lot of stuff to talk about this week. But I am open to keeping this going. If you have any extra topics and quarantine goes longer, we're going to be here every single day, 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you're not already, subscribe and click the bell. The bell will notify you when we are going live. Other than that, you guys, uh, leave comments down below once I turn off the live. Oh, we have a few more. Thanks for the advice. I was on keto when I was a child because of, oh, yes, please, Sarah, come chat because I'd like to hear everybody's topic about keto and diet, especially as a teacher. Uh, I'll tell you everything that I use, everything that has worked for me. I don't sell anything. This is just all from my experience. I'm going to go out and ride my bike. So if you're following on, if you're following me on Instagram, link down below. Uh, you'll probably see me in my stories trying to ride a bike before it rains again. Anyway, I will see you guys tomorrow. Set your clocks. Come say hi at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Sunday. Bye, you guys. <laughs>